Madonna Karen, they be sharing All their money got me wearing fly Girl, but I ain't asking They say they love my ass And set the jeans to religion I say no, but they can get it Welcome back to my channel. So today we're doing a pretty requested video, which is a video about tips on how to grow and like basically how to maintain a successful club, like right from the basic steps. So I'm going to be talking about that. Hopefully you enjoy me trying to teach my club dressage clips in the background and you might have noticed i got a new channel intro i'm working on doing a new setup that just matches my aesthetic more if you know what i mean but you know let's get started so first of all as with any club you want to make well any sub successful club that you want to make you should probably have a good club name the club name is extremely important because it is um, most people look at the club name before deciding if they want to join. It must be catchy, and if you want to, um, make it successful, you should probably not make it three words long. Most of the successful clubs I've seen have, um, two words, unless it's, like, catchy, like, for example, the Star Squad, or the Nightingale's House, those are names I stand by because they're catchy and they sound nice. If you are going to make a club like that though, try to keep the amount of letters to a minimum because like I said in my other video, I don't think anyone wants to have om nom nom dinosaur feathers or something displayed over their heads unless it's like a joke that I get but like no you want to have a good club outfit as well um i had a new member a few days ago she just bought the club outfit and she was like i feel snazzy in this that's what you want your club members to feel like when wearing your outfit you want to create a good outfit um especially a matching outfit at best because That'll make your club members actually want to wear the outfit. You want to have a matching theme that does fit your club name, your club horse, your club theme needs to be attractive to, you know, the community. So, for example, um, I know there's a club called Sparkle City. They're a filmmaking club and that's really cool. There's a club called um, Mountain Explorers, owned by my friend Pearl. Um, I'm pretty sure they're like a camping, outdoorish club, and that's like a really cool fit for a name. And I stand. So you want to have a theme that matches everything. So for example, uh, my club, Dangerous Sisters, uh, we use Frisians as the club horse because. Um, our theme is spies and you know spies are usually like hidden in the shadows so a dark coat horse kind of makes sense and the outfit I get it might not match but it's unique to us um, this outfit has been passed down through like all the generations of the dangerous sisters I've owned in the past so that's the history mm -hmm. of <laughs> our stuff but yeah my second tip is how to grow your club. So you want to advertise a lot in global. I remember when I first started out as Frost Sisters, I would literally copy and paste the text and I just like sit reading a book or something. And every four minutes I would like paste it and resend it. And then eventually I'd get people wanting to apply. So if you want to start it out from like the very bottom and you want a club without Discord or anything, um, you should probably do in-game interviews. So that's how DS started. So on the first generation, I would just do in-game interviews without requiring Discord. And then on the second generation, we did require Discord. 
but I didn't have strict requirements. So we ended up having like half the club having Discord, half the club ha didn't. And now we everyone has Discord. It's a strict requirement. So it depends if you want to like rise straight up or if you want to like slowly build it up. But I recommend just building it straight up if you do want to require Discord because it's way neater and you won't have to ban, remake, ban, remake or deal with all the stress um, and the drama of an unorganized club. You want to have a neat application process that you stand by. Um, for example, this doesn't apply to everyone, but DS has a trial stage as well as a voice interview. I recommend that if you are making a club, you should have a voice interview stage because if you like a lot of people tend to stay on mute during every call. So you don't know what they sound like. And for all you know, they could be a child predator or anything. So that's why I like to hear their voices um, so that we know they're not like a creepy Indian guy or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, so you should have a neat application process. Uh, so I make applications using Google Forms because it's the easiest way, but in um, in-game interviews, like they're not bad, but it's not as professional as you might want it. You have to have a strict rule and requirements in order to find the perfect fits for your club. So strict rules as in like no asking others for star coins, um, no bribing, stuff like that, um, no starting drama but you might want to be more specific on starting drama like no being rude um a certain amount of time you have to log on every week because to like to main activity you know and again my past experience what i used to do um i didn't have super strict requirements uh, so i'd always make exceptions for people that i thought deserved it but in the end, DS ended up disorganized and there was a lot of drama and people feeling left out because some people had Discord and they didn't. So that resulted in us banning. So again, stay organized. You can build your club up even if it's just from three members. You have to be finding active members and even if it takes a while, even if you're a small club of three to four members, as long as they're all active, you can build from there. If I had the chance to restart my club owning career, that's probably what I'd do. I'd set up a super neat application process and I, I would accept really slowly, make sure everyone in my club got to know each other well and make sure everyone is active. So something that's not super obvious, I guess, is you should make friends inside the SSO community, uh, particularly friends that are owners because they can give you a lot of good advice and help you. Um, you also have to be active yourself so I myself log on, like, as I said in my previous video, literally seven times a day to do everything and just talk. So you want to be yourself, be active, and you should probably arrange social medias. Um, I'm talking website, uh, Instagram, DS has an amino. Um, that's how you spread the news about your club. So you also must be ready to manage stress. There is a lot of stress, but it might be hard at first. It's honestly worth it. And you want to avoid drama as much as you can. The way to do that is, you know, literally hand pick your members. 
um, be very specific on what you're requiring. A lot of clubs have an age limit. Um, we don't, we just require our members to be mature because I don't find it fair if there are like really nice people out there who are just waiting like years until they can get older in order to join a club because I feel like it's not fair. But yeah, those are all my tips for being a beginner club owner um, or growing a small club. You have to be ready to learn. You must be open-minded to everything. And yeah, those are my tips. If you have any questions, um, any suggestions, or what you'd like to see in my next video, please let me know. But don't forget to subscribe and turn notifications on. See you guys next time. Don't